Okay, so uh, we were looking at a uh, series of non-negative numbers and we looked at various tests of convergence, uh, for example, comparison test, root test and uh, integral test. We start looking at uh, series which are not necessarily non-negative. So, let us define a series uh, A n uh, to be absolutely convergent if uh, you take the absolute value of each term and make a new series that is convergent okay this is the big typo here is absolutely convergent if this is convergent so this last word divergent should be convergent okay right and we say the series is conditionally convergent if the series is convergent but it is not absolutely convergent. So, um, sigma a n is convergent, but sigma mod a n is not convergent, then we say the series is conditionally convergent. Okay. And there is a particular type of series in which the terms become alternatively positive and negative. So, either first term is positive, second term is negative and so on or other way around. So, such series are called alternating series. Okay. So, for example, if you remember that series minus 1 to the power n divided by n, right, that was a series whose first term was equal to minus 1, second was minus 1 by 2, uh, plus 1 by 2, and so on. So, that was called alternating series. And, uh, so, what we are going to look at is uh, some of the properties of this series. Um, okay. So, uh, already we have seen one example that uh, the series alternate, alternating high, uh, harmonic series right? that is conditionally convergent. Obviously, we proved actually it is a convergent series and if you take the absolute values that becomes 1 over n sigma 1 over n that is not convergent. So, this is a series which is conditionally convergent. And if you look at the series cos n by n square, right, you can compare it with uh, 1 over n square because cos is bounded by 1. So, by comparison test absolute value of cos n divided by n square is less than 1 over n square. So, a n less than b n and b n is convergent. So, a n will be also convergent. So, this is a series which is absolutely convergent. Okay. And you can give more examples like that. Okay. The series uh, can be absolutely convergent and so basically for a series to be absolutely convergent, the tests are basically that of non-negative terms because absolute value of each term is a non-negative term. So, checking whether a series is absolutely convergent or not, you have to apply the tests for non-negative term series like root test, comparison test and so on. Okay. So, uh, here is a uh, theorem which says that if a series is absolutely convergent, then it is also convergent. Right? So, there is only one way obviously that a series is absolutely convergent, then it is also convergent. Right? So, what we are going to do is to prove that it is convergent, we will compare it with a series which is convergent. Okay? So, let us uh, very simple constructions, let us define B n to be A n plus mod of A n. Okay? So, um, if a n is less than 0, what is b n? If a n is less than 0, then mod of a n will be equal to minus. So, this will be 0. right? And if a n is bigger than 0, then this will be mod of a n is mod a n, uh, a n itself. So, it is 2 times that. So, this is a simple observation that b n is equal to 0 or b n is equal to 2 of mod 
an right uh, can you can you say that the series b n is convergent because an is given to be absolutely convergent right so b n is either zero or two mod an so we can compare it with uh, mod an which is absolutely convergent so series b n is uh, convergent so series b n is uh, less than or equal to mod an which is absolutely convergent so series b n is convergent and what is b n b n uh, what is an an is b n minus mod of an right that is how we define so if you go back an is equal to b n minus mod of an and we had already proved algebra of series if an and b n are two series which are convergent then the difference sum they are all convergent right so using that fact we get that an is sigma b n minus sigma mod a n. So, this is also a convergent series. The simple thing that uh, define b n to be equal to a n plus mod a n and compare it with mod b m. So, it says that if a series is absolutely convergent, it is also convergent. It is a necessary condition. Obviously, it is not sufficient right because a series may be absolutely convergent, uh, may be convergent, but not absolutely convergent that alternating series example alternating series is convergent but not absolutely convergent right this is only conditionally so very simple result which relates uh, the two and uh, you can have more examples uh, like this looks quite complicated it says an is equal to 1 if n is 1 it is minus 1 to the power n by 2 n if n is a prime and 1 over 2 to the power n otherwise it looks like a geometric series right but only when n is a prime it is not 1 over 2 to the power n it is minus 1 to the power n right so that will be a negative term there okay but if you look at the absolute value of this series that is convergent because that is a geometric series right if you take the absolute value of this series so mod an that will be 1 over 2 to the power n for all n. So, that is a convergent series because that is a geometric series with common ratio less than 1. So, that is convergent. So, this is a series which is absolutely convergent and hence it must also be convergent. So, this is one way of analyzing series that sometimes the absolute convergence is easier to prove than the series being convergent directly. So, you prove it is absolutely convergent as, as a consequence the series becomes convergent. So, that is applicable here. Okay. So, geometric series which is convergent. So, series it. So, here is a test specially applicable for alternating series when the terms are alternatively positive and negative. Only for those series is a useful theorem. It says that supposing a n is an alternating series. So, alternatingly either first term is positive, second is negative, third is positive and or other way around the first one is negative and positive. Says the two conditions must be satisfied the terms of absolute values of the terms of the series should be a decreasing sequence mod a 1 is bigger than mod a 2 and bigger than mod a 3 and so on. So, it is a decreasing sequence not only it is decreasing we should also have that limit of mod an is equal to 0 it is decreasing to 0 okay then the series is convergent so this is a test for alternating series we will not go into the proof of this okay we'll assume it right so um, for example let us look at uh, you remember we proved uh, that alternating harmonic series is convergent right if you look at the terms what are the terms of minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n. So, if you take absolute values that is equal to 1 over n. So, that is a decreasing right and goes to 1 over n mod a n goes to 0. So, this theorem is applicable for that alternating series. So, as a consequence you can say consequence of alternating series test that alternating harmonic series is convergent we proved it by definition itself right but this is a uh, consequence of this theorem also right how this theorem is useful 
So, this is alternating series uh, test. You may come across these things. So, proof uh, is slightly long, so we will not go through the proof. So, the, for example, this uh, alternating series, right? The absolute values are decreasing and goes to 0, so that is convergent. So, more we can have more examples like this. Let us look at this uh, series, right? Uh, we want to know whether this is convergent or this alternating series, right? Minus, uh, minus and plus terms are coming. Uh, let us look at uh, uh, mod a n, okay, absolute value. So, this will go up. So, it is to the power n divided by n square. What is the limit of that? That is a sequence, right? So, sequence is 2 to the power n divided by n square. What do you think should will be the limit of that? Just try to make a guess. That is what important is. Then you can prove it or disprove it whichever way you want it. 2 to the power n divided by n square. Let us look at first few terms and try to make a guess. So, n equal to 4 for example. So, 2 to the power 4. Right. So, what will it be? 2 to the power 4 is 16, right? And 4 to the power 2 also is 16, so that is 1. So, let us look at 5. So, as n becomes larger and larger, 2 to the power n starts becoming much bigger than n square. Right. So, that is how you should try to think of the numerator is becoming larger and larger at a rate much faster than the denominator. So, this will not converge, right. So, it should converge to plus infinity. So, that is a guess, right, because numerator is becoming larger and larger compared to the denominator. So, to prove that, one way is you apply the allopital rule, okay, here. So, when you apply the allopital rule, you get this and that clearly says the 2 1 cancels at it is same as the limit of 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay. So, that goes to infinity. So, what is the consequence of it? So, this alternating series cannot converge, right, because mod of a n goes to plus infinity. Even you can apply the nth root uh, nth term test. If a series is convergent, then the nth term a n must go to 0, right. Here mod a n is going to plus infinity, right. So, anyway a n cannot go to 0, because if a n goes to 0, then mod of a n also will go to 0 anyway. So, that cannot happen. So, either way you can say this series is not convergent. You can apply, no, no, previous theorem is only one way necessary. Uh, sorry, these are sufficient conditions. The alternating series tests, all tests are giving you sufficient conditions, they are not necessary conditions, right. Tests anywhere, whether in calculus or in series or anywhere, right, those tests always give you the sufficient conditions, but not necessary. For example, maxima minima, if something happens, if the second derivative is bigger than 0, then it is a local maximum, not the other way around. So, that may not be true. So, alternating series test also is a test which is giving sufficient conditions for something to happen, namely alternating series. If mod a n is decreasing and decreases to 0, then it is convergent. That does not mean other way around also is true. Okay? So, always be careful. So, this is so, there are more uh, examples that you can uh, study later on. Let us not discuss. Here is something uh, in the series, which uh, in some one way probably some of you might have already come across. A series of the form sigma a n x minus c raised to power n. 
So, what is this? We are trying to add up terms like a 1 x minus c raise to power 1 and so that is a 0. You can also have a 0 if you like. You can take uh, n equal to 0 also here. Okay, This is n equal to 0. You can put a constant term also. right? So, what are the terms look like? They look like some constant n term looks like a constant a n x minus a scalar c which is fixed raised to power n. right? So, it looks something like geometric series you can think of right? where the coefficient a n's are also varying, powers are increasing. This x, what is x? x is a variable which can take any real value. Okay? So, such a series is called a power series. Because it is x minus c, we say this power series is centered around the point c. Okay? So, this is a power series with variable x centered around uh, the point c. Okay? So, we want to say that this series is uh, convergent or not, we want to analyze the convergence or divergence when x is varying. Okay? But we all we only know when x is fixed, right? When x is fixed as a real number, then it is a series of real numbers, right? So we can analyze convergence or divergence of this. So we we say that the series converges at the point x is equal to x zero. If you put the value of x is equal to x zero, that is a series of numbers now, right? That is convergent. Okay. So, basic problem is to analyze for what well given a series power series like this for what values of x it will converge, right? how to analyze that. Okay. So, to analyze that the simplest thing is uh, let us look at x to the power n, this series x to the power n, so it is centered around x minus 0 to the power n, right? So, it is centered around x to equal to 0 or c equal to 0, right? x to the power n, so it, it is a geometric series, right? With common ratio of x. So, we can analyze for what values of x this will converge that we have already seen. So, it converges for mod x strictly less than 1, right? So, this series is convergent for mod x less than 1, strictly less than 1 and we know what is the sum, sum of geometric series, right? 1 over 1 minus common ratio, so 1 over 1 minus x. So, this is a geometric series which is convergent. So, this power series is convergent for the all the values x between minus 1 and 1, right? And the sum is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. So, now look this, this looks like a function equation for the domain x is equal to minus 1 to 1, the function f of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x is equal to x to the power n for x between minus 1 and 1. So, this looks like a function being defined by a series and is an important question in uh, uh, mathematics. You will see uh, it comes at various places when can a function be represented in the form of a series. So, we will we'll one form uh, one uh, particular case we will study uh, we will uh, come across today, but others are quite important. There are something called uh, Fourier series, there is something called uh, in statistics probability will come across characteristic functions of distributions and so on trying to express a function f in terms of a series. Okay. So, here is the simplest case of power series. So, this is an example x to the power n is convergent uh, power series with uh, whenever mod x is between 0 and uh, minus 1 to 1. So, look at this for example. is a power series centered at x is equal to 3, right? because x minus 3 is to power n. We are giving very simple examples. So, how do you analyze this convergence of this? It is a, 
it is a, again a geometric series right it is again a geometric series what is the common ratio minus 1 by 3 into x minus 3 right so we know apply the geometric series test so this will be convergent if and only if the common ratio right is between minus 1 and 1 so minus 1 by 3 multiplied by x minus 3 right that should be less than mod of that should be less than 1 common ratio so that gives you the range for which values of x so if you analyze that so it says x is between 0 and 6 right mod of 1 by 3 x minus 3 less than 1 so simplify that is that okay so that means this series the given series is convergent when x lies between 0 and 6 simple geometric series we are uh, looking at so that is advantage of power series that you can apply in one way or the other geometric series and get some results okay and the sum is 1 over 1 minus x so you can find out the sum okay so there are more examples you can look at now uh, i think probably uh, yeah so uh, it makes sense to define what is called the domain of convergence of a power series so given a power series an x minus c raised to power n one of the things will happen right so what will happen the series converges only when x is equal to c or there is a number r such that it converges for all values x minus c less than r and diverges for mod of x minus c big strictly bigger than r strictly less than r and strictly bigger than r or the series converges absolutely that is also a possibility right the series converges absolutely so one can uh, prove that only one of these possibilities can hold and one will hold okay again uh, the argument why one of them only will hold uh, will not go through that so for a power series the possibilities are the series converges for only one point x is equal to c right or there is a interval around x x minus r to x plus r so that this is convergent and if the value is strictly bigger like geometric series mod x less than 1 strictly less than 1 it was convergent right bigger than or equal to 1 was divergent so it says bigger than r it is divergent equal to r we don't know what can happen so that may depend upon the series and converges absolutely for all values that is another possibility so three possibilities so given these three possibilities let us skip the proof we define what is called the radius of convergence of a power series so what is the radius of convergence first possibility is was it was converges only at one point so in that case we say that the radius of convergence is zero because only at x is equal to c it is convergent around x equal to c there is no interval only that point so there is no length of the interval it is a only one point in that interval so and if it converges for all then you say r is equal to plus infinity is a whole real line so that is plus infinity and if there is a positive uh, number r uh, such that for uh, x minus e bigger than r it diverges and converges absolutely for x minus c less than r then you say that this r is called the radius of convergence and x minus r to x plus r is called the interval of convergence the open interval okay it's called x minus c to so that means there is an interval around c c minus r to 
C plus R, X lies between that, right? So this says that, okay. So that is called the interval of convergence. So either it will be 0, R is equal to 0, only one point, R is the whole of real line, or it is an interval, open interval, in which surely it will converge. But we do not know what happens at the end points of that interval. For example, in geometric series, when x is equal to plus 1 or minus 1, the series diverges, right. So, at end points, uh, anything is possible. So, let us look at one example. Look at the power series x minus 2 raised to power n divided by n square. So, how do you analyze convergence of this series? power n, n square, right. So, which test do you think will be more suitable? I cannot apply comparison test here because our numerator and denominator both are increasing, right, n becoming larger. Is a power n, so it looks more suitable to take the ratio test here, because when I take the ratio, powers will tend to cancel out. Right. So, let us apply the ratio test to this okay, and see what happens. So, uh, take the ratio and limit comes out to be mod of x minus 2. So, that is a simple powers cancel out limit mod x minus 2 n over n plus 1 and that gives this remember that series goes to that sequence goes to 1 limit of that. If you want to see why n plus 1 minus 1. So, it is 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So, that goes to 1. So, this is mod x minus 2. So, it says that this series will converge absolutely when mod x minus 2 is less than ratio test, right? Less than 1. So, ratio test less than 1. So, it will converge absolutely and that means between these limits and it will be divergent outside. When it is equal to 1, see what so what is the uh, interval minus 1 to 3, right? That is the interval of convergence. When x is equal to 1, what is that series? End point. x is equal to 1. So, minus 1 to the power n divided by n square. Is that convergent? That is the alternating series. You can apply the alternating series test, right? Mod of that is 1 over n square that goes to 0. So, that is convergent for at the end point, okay? So, it is absolutely convergent for that also. When x is equal to 3, what happens? x is equal to 3. That is the other end point. So, x is equal to 3, 3 minus 2 that is 1 over n square that also is convergent. So, not only the radius of convergence is equal to that my 1 to 3 that open interval, but even the end points it is converging for this series particular series. So, end points you have to analyze separately. Okay. So, that is convergent. So, interval of convergence is 1 to 3 that may not happen always. So, let us uh, why we are bothered about this uh, uh, interval of convergence? Because in the interval of convergence, the power series converges absolutely, right? And when it converges absolutely, the limit you can call it as f of x. So, if the series converges absolutely in the uh, in the interval of convergence, you can define the function f of x to be equal to this, right? Now, you can ask a question. So, what is the question you would like to ask? Each term on the right hand side seems to be differentiable, right? x minus x 0 raised to power n that is a differentiable function. So, we are adding up differentiable func powers of a differentiable function. Is the sum differentiable? Right? Is the sum integrable if because they are all integrable also x to the minus a to the power n is integrable right so the question comes that in a power series 
is the function defined by the sum in the domain of convergence right differentiable or integrable so these are two theorems we will not uh, again go to the proofs because so it says consider the power series this and has a non zero radius of convergence r so this is the interval of convergence then it says then the derivative f is a function defined by the series right so what is the derivative mean f of x f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h limit h going to 0 right so if we are asking whether you can compute the derivative of that function it says yes you can not only compute you can take the derivative inside the series so it is again interchange derivative of the sum is equal to sum of the derivatives right so it says that the function is differentiable and this series also has the same radius of convergence which and the sum is equal to f dash so that is a very nice thing if a function is defined by a power series in a radius of convergence right the function is differentiable and the derivative is the derivative of the each term okay added up together so that is what it says because x to the power n is any number of times differentiable right so when you add up a series power series so a power series in the radius of convergence is infinitely differentiable every k the derivative exists every k the derivative exists right and that is given by this so this is about derivative so the function defined by power series in the interval of convergence is differentiable and derivative first second third anything is equal to the sum of those corresponding derivatives of x minus a raised to power n what about integration if something similar happens that if f of x is the function defined by the series then the this function f has a anti derivative and what is it and how do you get the anti derivative of a function fundamental theorem of calculus by integrating a to x so it says the anti derivative is given by integrating each term what one at a time right to get the anti derivative of f you have to just take the anti derivatives of x minus a raised to power n and what is the anti derivative of that we know right so that is anti derivative okay so f of x so as a consequence of this f of x is equal to sigma of the integrals okay so integration which is again a limit process integral a to b f x d x is a limiting process limit of partition sums and so on upper sums lower sums it says you can take that limit also inside the summation sign so in power series is a very useful result that you can take differentiation inside right derivative of the sum is equal to sum of the derivatives integral of the sum is equal to sum of the integrals a very useful results okay and uh, if you will will proof is there in the slides you can read if you like but from examination point of view will not ask you the proofs okay but those who are keen to know how the proof goes you can have a look at it and uh, essentially you will have to look at the upper sums and lower sums right because integrals are coming into picture okay right in the power series there is a very special case of power series so let me just uh, say that what is a special case this is a special case of power series remember power series at a n x minus a raised to power n right where a n's are the coefficient of the nth term if the coefficient of the nth term is the nth derivative at the point a where it is centered divided by n factorial then this series is called the taylor series for the function f f is a function given to you right and suppose the function is any number of times differentiable right nth derivative exists so if you can write f of x 
So, this is a function with the sum as f. So, f of x is equal to this thing. Then this is called the Taylor series. Okay. So, you can ask the question for what functions have Taylor series expansions. This series is called Taylor series expansion because it involves derivatives of the function f, but it may or may not converge. It is a power series, right? So, what is the domain of convergence of this series? In that domain of convergence, will it represent the function f itself or not? That is the question, right? So, this uh, most of you must have done this uh, in your uh, undergraduate course is Taylor series and when the A is 0, that is called Maclaurin series. And all those series sin x, cos x, e raised to the power x, they have the series expansions. What are those series? They are precisely Maclaurin series x is equal to 0, uh, see A is equal to 0, right. So, those are uh, so, you ask the, uh, I hope you have done these things, if not anyway probably you will do it sometime or you should revise. So, uh, you, you want to know that when will this converge to the function f. So, what are you interested in? You are interested in knowing f minus the sum, right, partial sum, when there is a series converge in the partial sum goes to 0, right. So, the sum from some stage k to infinity that is a remainder term in the series that uh, winning thing is called the remainder term. So, you have many ways of representing remainder terms and analyzing when does remainder term goes to 0, in what domain it goes to 0. So, for the trigonometric functions, exponential functions you show that the remainder terms go to 0 for all values of <coughs> x. Okay. So, uh, that is a particular form of power series. Okay. So, with that we end the course.